It's a priceless collection, three million treasures from our big and small screen. Everything from homicide and Matlock police to Skippy and young talent time. Newsreels from World War II, even historic recordings from the wireless. And there's a race to save them all. Brady Halls took a trip down memory lane. Belinda Hunt does the walk several times a day. Deep in the vaults of the National Film and Sound Archive. It often reminds me of a uh, prisoner walking along here. I start singing, You Used to Bring Me Flowers. So, yeah. <laughs> Most things have a TV theme in here, for here, is TV heaven. Yeah, so these are our two-inch videos, so produced um, by the television stations from pretty much in the 60s and right up to the late 70s. Matlock and, Police. Uh, Matlock Police, that's right. Um, the Box, uh, lots of Crawford episodes. We'll soon be entering beautiful downtown Matlock. It's the Leyland Brothers from 38 years ago. Homicide up there. How are you getting on with our friend, Vix? Not too good, sir. He's lost his memory and he's gone deaf and dumb. Has he? We've got some Division 4 down here. Oh, wow. Yep, some, uh, lots of telethons. <laughs> yes, the telethons. <laughs> Betty from Blacktown with $5 donation. <laughs> yes. That really needs to go in the archive. <laughs> they were big in the 80s. Everything that's ever been on the box. Oh, look at that perfect match. <laughs> Blind Why date. Is that you got a perfect How to react to that. <laughs> Comes from broadcasters. It comes from filmmakers, uh, recording artists. Sometimes it comes from families who've sort of inherited Uncle Joe's stuff in the attic. Is all gathered by Chief Collector Meg Labram, who with her team decides what is worthy and what is not. The eagle has landed. <laughs> the old World War II movie. Yeah, these have come from um, a, a really wonderful collector um, way out in Western Victoria. There are three, over three million items in our collection now. We would have other vaults full of the one inches, which is more sort of like the 80s and 90s uh, format. All climate controlled and fireproof. That's right. <laughs> right, I could be trapped in here with an episode of Home and Away. So in here, Brady, we've got all sorts of short films and documentaries. War veterans home lottery TV advert. Barry Crocker pilot segments. <laughs> so I just picked that up. Scenes of Canberra back in the 70s, so right. we can look at cities and see how they've changed over the years. Definitely. Nearly everything that has ever been recorded is here, or coming here, our living history. We're sitting on this treasure chest of stuff. When people say, but why? Why would you be archiving something like um, the young doctors, I don't know, young talent time, something yes, like that. Yeah. The answer is that they are all part of the experience that it is to be Australian. The young talent team, everybody. We've got more than a century's worth of the stuff and it needs to be digital to be accessible. Making all this film and tape computer digital means we can access it all one day on the internet. But there's also an urgency about converting this film and tape. You see, it's decaying. Once it gets to this stage, we've lost the film. It's really a race against time, essentially. Film and tape was never meant to last forever. It's now breaking down. And so the federal government is pouring millions of dollars into converting it all to digital over the next five years before we lose it forever quite incredible looking over the shoulder of the operators what they're actually uncovering on a daily basis. Recently production That's manager shell. Gordon McPail oversaw the precious film transfer of our Anzac diggers leaving for Gallipoli. Ships laden with troops set off. And it just brought it to life and it was just made the hairs on the back of your neck stand up that these poor people and what was happening and they were smiling just getting on the ships not knowing what lay ahead of them. Upstairs Chrissy has been watching TV at work for 32 years now. Good evening and welcome to The Current Affair. Today she's digitising a current affair from 1978. 
Not her favourite show, by the way. I guess The Sullivans was one of the most emotional shows. I've copied a lot of This Is Your Life and I'm always crying at the end of it. This is your life. In another room, The Price is Right is being kept for posterity. 340, the 320 gets it, Steve. Of course, all these old tapes and films have to be played on old machines. No one's still making them. That's where Dave comes in, the last of the old guard engineers who builds spare parts for obsolete machines. Lots of equipment that we can cannibalise so we can actually keep repairing the gear. Returning to scale. Our sound history is also disappearing. Today, a technician is saving the 1930 Melbourne Cup. And Jerry spends his day lifting over the scratches on records to... Get as much of the audio signal off the disc as possible. And occasionally rests his steady hand by digitising early Edison cylinders that are rapidly deteriorating. So anything that played audio or visual... That's right. ..is in here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the radios are absolutely gorgeous. Can I touch you it? You can. I remember as a kid. <laughs> Where's the other tin can? <laughs> and so much more. It's the master log of the first broadcast oh, ever wow. for Channel 9. Good evening and welcome to television. This is Graham Kennedy's crown. Oh. This is the king of There's television's king. crown. <laughs> This is a genuine Skippy oh tea set from the original, um, original broadcast era. Skippy has continued to be broadcast around the world ever since it was first released. Is that right? Yeah. So it's playing somewhere in the world it's right now? It's playing somewhere right now. Good driver, Skip, the small one. Hide your eyes. And in 100 years from now, the world's smartest kangaroo and perhaps this story will still be watched by someone else. Well, what a collection. The National Film and Sound Archive has set a deadline of five years to complete the transfer of all those historic pictures and sound before they're lost forever. It's hoped much of it will then be publicly available online. And as you saw, the archive also features old home videos. If you'd like to offer up your family's treasure, please get in touch with the curators.